clearly there's competition. Great Wall, BYD both want to take a leadership share. They're competing fiercely because they know the market is enormous. And China has just crossed Germany as the second biggest exporter of cars, and EV has been fueling that growth. So we know that's critically important, and both BOID and Greywall are positioned to do well. Yeah, so I mean, this is a market that is only going to grow and become presumably um, more profitable and uh, more entrenched. What names do you like in that? Are you, are you a buyer in this space? We're absolutely a buyer in that space. Uh, we, we like BYD. You know, they're very cost efficient. And we know it's a company that's been very, very good at scaling. And really, ultimately, you know, China is going to take that mid segment. We tend to think of it as potentially being the uh, the future of, of, you know, what is today the Toyota Camry. BYD could very much be that for the EVs. Right. What about geopolitics and how that plays into things, especially when it comes back in supply chains? Obviously, you have uh, Mr. Buffett, who's not selling out completely, but obviously stepping down on his stake as far as BYD is concerned, and also talking about how he is distancing himself from the region because of Geopol. Uh, Tanvir, you're absolutely right. Uh, what Buffett is saying is not that he doesn't like EV, he doesn't think BYD is going to do well, but that the geopolitics, you know, that's simply both the optics of it and the fact that, you know, obviously he, he's got a lot of American investors, that's caused him to pull back. And so, again, I think this is much more of the optics, the geopolitical risk. And again, as an investor, if you can underwrite that risk, it's not a bad time to earn some risk premium. It isn't. And so what does this mean for Chinese EV makers and then Tesla in the mix, uh, given that uh, they don't want to let go off, let up really on that market at all, uh, the China market, which is obviously they're trying to ramp up capacity at, at the Shanghai factory. You know, um, Tesla's uh, been very, very successful selling cars in China, but ultimately to get scale and volume, you got to have a, a major offering in kind of that mid-range segment. And that means very, very fierce price competition. I think ultimately it'll be difficult for Tesla to compete fiercely in that kind of median range. You know, Tesla will always be a premium luxury brand in China. I think they're going to do well, continue to do well there. Mm -hmm. But I think they're going to have to seed over uh, kind of the, the average consumer vehicle uh, where you win by volume and cost.